What's up, everybody? Welcome to LED Live. We got an exciting show. We have a guest named Wendy from Indiana, and she's going to be presenting to us some deception in children's cartoons. Mm. Nothing new to us, right? Yeah. We know about this. So, <laughs> thank you for bringing some new stuff that we actually haven't covered because I've recently seen. Uh, some of these new episodes of Bluey and things like that. It seems like a pretty wholesome cartoon, but you've been seeing it with your children and, and some red flags came up. Yeah, so I have two little boys and we often go to the library and rent movies as a treat for them. And um, just watching the shows and they are, they're super cute. My boys love them. But as we start watching, I start getting red flags. Mm. You know, I start seeing some things that disturb me, don't necessarily go along with my belief system. And so, you know, I have to watch that with some discernment and see what is worth putting in front of my kids and what's yeah. not. So I started gathering all those together. And um, eventually, if I like, there's enough here that I feel like we really got to say something about this. Yeah. So this first clip, I just wanted to say I included to show you how cute it is. It does have a lot of parent interaction, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and it shows the kids just really loving their time with their parents. So this is to show you how adorable Bluey can be. Ladies and gentlemen. I will now play for you the Rondo a la Turca. <laughs> Hi, piano! Ladies and gentlemen, I'm terribly sorry. I seem to be having a little bit of trouble with my piano. <laughs> No, it's still my turn. Taking turns can be difficult. Dad, she's had this many turns. You can be the bum bum ghost. <laughs> So to me, that was wholesome yeah, you know yeah, like that's cool. like a beautiful picture of a dad playing with his kids and and even when the other one was kind of jealous the dad was like no you guys can both come and play you know yeah taking yeah. turns things that you would mm -hmm. want kids to think about and discuss with their parents i love the yeah. artwork like i started seeing these before i ever saw the show at walmart i just saw a collection of the toys and i was like man i love that it looks so cute yeah they have really? toys with Bluey? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. so it's a big thing. It's oh, big it's, thing. yeah, it's real big. Yeah. This is actually on Disney+. Plus. I've it's not a Disney show. It. It's from Australia, but Disney always loves to yeah. buy up anything, even like Baby Einstein and stuff like that. Yeah. But, you know, I think artwork is a big draw. Like, probably like 50% of why people watch something. SpongeBob, it's got amazing art. Those stories are not, you know, it's got some humor in it, but I think... There's something that draws us to art. My boys, yeah, they're they're very much drawn to Bluey. And when we first started watching this episode, they were even, you know, hey, do the piano on us and, oh. and wanting to be a part of what they're seeing. And so we still do that with them because it's, yeah, it's actually so helpful awesome. parents think of some fun things. That they, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it does. It helps parents see you know, this is a good way to interact with their children. Yeah. Don't forget to have imagination. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great things that parents can draw from this. Yeah. Um, so good feedback, good things in the media about it and all yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Except for the cancel culture article I saw. It no said, way. There's an article that said cancel culture is coming for Bluey. Mm. Why? Uh, there was some lady, she was saying, where's the racial diversity? I'm for like, dude, they're dogs. dogs. They're yeah. like blue and brown. And there's every, there's definitely racial diversity. That is so weird. And then she said, what about, uh, you know, disabilities, which I think is cool to include somebody in a wheelchair or something. But then it, it always comes back to the, the gender, uh, sexual yeah, relationship really thing. Want. You know, it's like if you don't include this very small minority of the population in every kid's show, then yeah, it must be canceled. Hate. And we see that happen uh, pretty much in all children's media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sadly. Yeah. Well, so here, this next clip will show you how um, some of the bluey kind of takes a turn. And so you have the cuteness still, but they start putting in some other agendas. Mm. So we'll start seeing what that looks like. Don't worry, Bumpy. The wise old wolf hound will be able to magic you better. <gasps> Doctor. Please, can you magic him better? Magic? Please, please, please. 
Okay, little one, perhaps there is a way I can help. Oh, wonderful! Bring me a pair of purple underpants. Okay. Ah, now it's making sense. Whoa, I'm not finished. I need a pair of purple underpants from someone who's never been sick. Never been sick? Never been sick. Oh. Have you ever been sick? Oh, yes. I had a runny nose last year. Well, it will have to be someone else's purple underpants, I'm afraid. No problems. I'll get some from someone in town. We'll be right back. Good luck, Barnacus. So oh. that underpants thing was interesting. <laughs> Like, yeah, why'd it have to be underpants? Exactly. Like, that's so random. Like, you could say any object, but then there's an underpants, and then this dog is literally like, okay. I mean, obviously, we don't see any genitalia, but that is clearly he's yeah. naked, yeah, you know, like, like right in front of him. I think yeah. if you told somebody, hey, I got this idea for a kid's show where, uh, you know, this little kid goes to an adult, and the adult says, hey, give me your underpants, <laughs> and the dog takes it off. It's a little alarming. Uh, but, so, they, right, but when it's dogs. Well, what's yeah. the context to this? Like, why, why the underpants are so important? Honestly... It could have been anything. She's right. Mm. The The point of the show, this episode is showing that um, everybody is the same in the fact that everyone gets sick. Mm. So the younger dog, Bingo, is sick in the hospital and her dad and Bluey are making like a homemade show with all their family and they're getting together to say, hey, you know, everyone gets sick. Don't worry about it. Just wait it out. It'll oh, go away. Wow. But then, of course, we also have yeah, the underpants completely unnecessary. Yeah. I actually didn't even think of that. The first time I was getting this clip, I was more focused on, you know, who she goes to see. Right. So the new age guru who has all the answers. Exactly. Yeah. What you don't see in this little clip is beforehand she asks everyone she knows, what should I do? Where should I go? And then finally someone tells her, Oh, go see the wise old wolfhound. Mm. And so then she goes and you see, you know, the psychedelic colors and that the crystals. So and wow. yeah, people are just like, Oh, that's uh, that's awesome. But if that would have been like, go talk to the pastor and he went to the yeah. pastor and the pastor gave him good advice, people were like, Don't be shoving your beliefs down my Or problem. like, Oh, that's boring. Mm. You know? Yeah. When I was younger, I was really involved in Harry Potter. Um, my parents took me to the library as well, but not to watch wholesome kids shows. I wasn't raised a Christian. We would read a lot of Harry Potter books. We started watching the movies and everything. And, and you know, I, I even had the Harry Potter video games. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to cast the spells. I remembered what the spells were called from the mm -hmm. video game, and I was mentioning it, and I was like, oh, this is so cool, and I want to be like that. And So, so media had an influence on you? No Absolutely. way. Oh, Couldn't well, have. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it did on me too. The movie okay. The Craft. I didn't get into Harry Potter. I don't even know if Harry Potter was around when I was a kid, but. Uh, Wait, you're that much older than me, Mikey? Much older, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, movie, when I was in high school, it was a movie called The Craft. The first one that came out, they've rebooted it for this generation to be tainted by it too, but. Um, yeah, you know, four high school hotties practicing witchcraft, and it, it mm. looked a lot more realistic than Harry Potter. Right. Harry Potter is like a wand and you know, all this stuff, but. They would just, it, it was real witchcraft that they were doing. Um, they mm. were sitting in circles and doing binding spells and trying to make a guy fall in love with them and all these things that any teenager would want to have that power to do. Right, so right. It, definitely I was like, yeah, that looks way cooler than Christianity. Mm. People might think those shows are a lot more overt than, let's say, a cartoon. But the mind is so powerful and the, it, it it takes on the principles that, he, that it sees. And mm -hmm. you kind of... Comes back to your mind at the oddest times, but I was watching this clip and it's like a child could think, "Oh, if the magic doesn't work the first time, or if I ask and I don't get it the first time, I should keep asking and keep asking, and then and then it will something will manifest or what have right. you." Usually, when people for the first time either try uh, tarot cards or palm reading and it doesn't really work out, they say, "Oh, this was a fluke," mm -hmm. and they move on. But if they have that message of maybe I should try it again, maybe wow. I should ask again another time, and then do whatever the guru tells me so I can get the outcome that I desire, it's like. Like, like teaching the persistence like exactly trying, yeah like. exactly which is also a principle we have in christianity of like um going to the lord and and putting your your requests before him pray without ceasing mm -hmm. but it just goes to like which door do you want to open do you want a god of blessing or do you want satan who has no good intention towards you yeah and the other thing is that um people might think oh but this is just innocent but like you can see how from a very young age kids are taught 
that's spiritualism is good yeah, right? yeah. That, that spirits are good they're your friend and then you know you get into movies like harry potter when you're a little bit older and now they're cool they're cool kids you know and maybe somebody associates with harry potter because they're the nerd the underdog but they can be the hero mm -hmm. and through magic and you know like eventually mm. when you come to your teen years and maybe your brain cells are still developing and somebody invites you to a seance or like a play with a ouija board you're going to do it and and, you yeah. know, like, because you've been trained. Groomed. The Bible the Bible says, train up a child in the way you should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it, which obviously speaks of teaching in the way of the Bible. But I do believe the opposite happens as oh, well. Yeah. Absolutely. But only by the grace of God can a person, when they are an adult, who's had such a childhood, still come to the Lord, but they are set up in a certain direction. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's kind of like a uh, misunderstanding. I don't know if it's a misunderstanding, but the people think that the world is just neutral. Like, oh, if you didn't have the Bible, then you're just going to grow up in this neutral thing. But there is an agenda. Like you see uh, the new age being pushed in the, the Lion King, that dude with Rafiki, he was yeah. the wise one that did all that voodoo and new age stuff. And then uh, you're talking about spiritualism. That's in all the Disney movies. They always yeah. talk yeah, to yeah, him. Absolutely. Even in the Lion King, he talked to his dead dad, Pocahontas talking to Mother Willow. And there's all the, you know, the Mulan. spirits of the dead, Mulan talking to the dead. So you have necromancy in most of Disney, uh, the new age being pushed from the nineties. I mean, even the eighties and stuff, but like tiny tunes that duck, she was always meditating, um, boy meets world. The, the girl that all the boys like, she was a new age. So there it's not a neutral, it's not like there's a neutral message. It's usually a push towards witchcraft. And like Kenya was saying, there's a lot more overt stuff like Harry Potter and the craft. But Satan has a tackle box. He's yeah, like, oh, you don't. Work for oh, one. the parents don't want him to watch Harry Potter. What about Bluey? Hey, yeah, absolutely. I'll get you this way. And my son is two, and he loves Bluey. As soon as the theme song comes on, he's like, Bluey. Yeah. And we really don't. We've watched it a couple of times, but he's he already knows. You know, that's the sound, and mm -hmm. starts dancing, and then he wants to do the magic xylophone all the time, and oh. yeah. So well, going back to the underpants, like obviously we get the message, right? But. I don't think the end justifies the means, especially in the world that we live in today. Oh, yeah. We yeah. Uh, we talk a lot about what's happening online, what's posted online, all the sensitive content that's put out that kids get a hold of, and it's through their phones, it's through their devices. And so the image of a child, I'm sure it was for a comedic effect. Uh, the child, the puppy is in the hospital watching on their phone, their family, reenacting this thing but then underpants is involved in a comedic way of mm -hmm. like giving your underpants to someone else and yeah. just switch the context like yeah. a friend hands them a phone and it's the same type of thing but it's in a very inappropriate way of like mm. a stranger with a child or what have you but that's comedy you know that's funny oh i've seen that before right. on bluey like so just, just desensitizing exactly desensitizing and then also making the warning not as potent because it's like oh but it happens here, so why can't it be good here? Yeah, that's a Hollywood yeah. trick, too. Put a laugh track on and it's okay. You know, yes. it's been happening through history. We, we have a, a video on our channel um, where it shows how Nickelodeon is selling explicit content to children. And we'll put a little box in the top of the corner here so you can click on it. But you should definitely go watch that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. Okay, well, we'll keep rolling and see how some of these deceptions are still in the cartoon. <laughs> super blatant like it was the dog version of buddha and the <laughs> bluey i guess is getting distracted they're playing a game hide yeah. and seek getting mm -hmm. distracted like what was i doing 
instead of praying and asking God, bring back to my memory what I was doing, uh, let's just look at Buddha and get in a meditative pose. And my whole mind gets emptied, the whiteness everywhere, and it gets brought back. You know, again, this isn't a neutral thing. This is teaching Eastern yeah. mysticism. And if that would have been Bluey prays to Jesus and asks for what was I doing to come back, there'd be an uproar. Like, why are you putting this in yeah. my kids' cartoons? I don't I don't teach them Christianity. Yeah. Anytime you see Christianity in the media, it's always mocked and ridiculed. Like on The Simpsons, you got the annoying neighbor. He's the Christian. But when this new age, oh, it's cool, hip and trendy and... Yeah, it's crazy. Man. We have a good friend of the ministry and of the show called Eric Wilson. He's been on the many shows here before in LED Live. And uh, he was formerly in uh, martial arts and he had black belts in multiple ones and went beyond that where he was trained to be a disciple, which is beyond the black belt. Um, and we did a documentary with him years ago called The Dragon Revealed, yeah. which he shares his testimony, part one and part two. He kind of goes over the problems with martial arts and Eastern mysticism and all these practices, including yoga, including meditation. And he explains it as, and this was his own experience being way up there. He explains it as the whole goal of all of this is to achieve the chi power, mm. chi, which yeah. you see in all these magazines and everything. He said chi is nothing else than demon possession. Yeah. That's why they're able to levitate. That's why they're able to cut through blocks of ice, et cetera. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. so he's just saying like, you cannot disconnect the spiritual from the physical. You right. cannot just be like, yeah. oh, oh, I'm just doing self-defense. I'm just meditating because I'm just, you know, stressed trying to clear, stressed out. I'm trying to clear my mind. He says all of that is engraved in this whole idea of spiritualism and achieving the chi, which is demon possession. So if you want to watch that documentary, by the way, part one is for free on our YouTube channel, The Dragon Revealed, and part two and part one, you can buy or rent on our Vimeo channel. Just look for vimeo.com slash Little Light Studios. Yeah, yeah. And that's good too. Um, one of the reasons I quit teaching in public school was for that very reason. They actually have now, and in, in all schools around the country, what they do is rebranding it from meditation to mindfulness. And so there's all this research out that is proven when kids spend five, 10 minutes in mindfulness every day in the classroom, it lowers bad behavior. Wow. And yeah, they have higher scores because they're more apt to concentrate during the school day. And um, the school that I was in, we were actually given, you know, yoga cards and a little chime. So every day wow. they would, yeah, they'd encourage us after recess, if they're rowdy, just go ahead and do the chime and everybody <laughs> can just calm their mind and what? do these things yeah you know i bet they could do a study that says uh kids that were read the psalms after mm. after uh recess were calm and they had higher test scores i mean this is crazy because in public school system they actually got rid of prayer and the yeah. bible yeah. and now they're just yeah. introducing something new a new religion because when i was in high school after the announcements they called it uh, a moment of silence so for like two minutes it just a moment of silence and you could pray if you wanted to, but they're not going to say that. Um, but now they're bringing new the Eastern mysticism and yeah. new age meditation into the yeah. school. And that's okay. Mm, I thought right. it was supposed to be separation of church and state. And that's why we got rid of the Bible and prayer, but now we're yeah. bringing in the new religion. Just tolerate everything, but Christianity. That's right. So something else I want to add here is the fact that this kid is uh, coming up to this Buddha statue and instantly gets what he wants, which is to find everybody in the hide and seek game. Mm -hmm. And sure. you know, it, that's not taught in Christianity. In Christianity, it's like, yeah, you pray to the Lord and he says that he wants to answer our prayers and he listens. But sometimes God not answering a prayer is a way of him answering. Right. Because sometimes our, what we ask for is not good for us, or it might be of a, coming from a self, selfish point of view. And God knows what's best and he, he answers according to what is best for us because he loves us. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't always mean like there's, you know, instant, instant gratification. gratification. Yeah. Yeah. God is not a gumball machine kind of God where you just put in your coin, you get something sweet out of yeah, it a genie. whenever you want, like a genie. Yeah. God is much more wise than that. In this case, they're showing this Buddha statue and it's showing Eastern mysticism and religion. And it's like, oh yeah, if the kids are taught, oh, if I just come to Buddha, uh, I, I just mm. get whatever I want. Immediately, yeah, I'm not course. going to come to the Christian God where I might have to wait for something. You yeah. know, yeah, yeah. Here, when you pray, God either says yes or no or wait. Right? Mm -hmm. no, yeah, that's right. 
So next, we're going to just take a look at how, um, you know, we've seen a lot of the Eastern um, meditation, and we've seen how they're not obviously going to God, they're going to something else. And what that opens them up to. So it's very brief. You have to listen closely, but we're going to take a really close look at kind of some of the side effects of meditation. And the bubble up. So I paid in chocolate. Oh, well done, Bingo. Hey, what's with all the salad? <laughs> Sorry, Redfin. That's okay. Dad, are there aliens on the roof? Yeah, maybe. Ooh. Mom, can I be an astronaut when I grow up? If you like. Hey. So yeah, new age meditation leads to even Bluey's in a karate outfit since we you just brought yeah, up yeah. the martial yeah. arts. And we know that there's a religious aspect to martial arts even, but yeah, mentioning are there aliens on the moon? So now you're putting that seed in kids' minds too. And the dad yeah. wasn't like, No, that's ridiculous. He was like, No, oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because what you're seeing today more and more is, you know, this tie to religion and then UFOs or ufology and how it's tied to the new age. Yeah. And so what I wish I would have brought, I have a book that I'd read and it, it shows 10 different uh, doctors that came together and combined all their research. And it was just like a list of what possible side effects you could have after meditation. And one of them surprisingly was alien encounters. Wow. I'm like, that's just a side mm. effect, like headache and alien encounters. It's so random, but enough that, you know, 10 different doctors got together to publish this to say, wow. you know, obviously this is a deal. So, so and they're calling them aliens, not like spirit guides or something yeah. else. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. Amazing. You got this cute, innocent show that has all these good values saying, like showing kids you should go to the guru. You should meditate. And, oh, when you start seeing aliens, it's okay. Remember the dad even said there's probably aliens out there. Yeah, I mean, it's I like mean. Satan just setting you up. Like, <laughs> yeah. One little do this, seat at do a this, time. And, and this is going to happen. And we've released plenty of videos on our YouTube channel. We've re released a documentary that all show that this whole alien thing, it's nothing else than just demon possession. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so, or like demons coming Posing. in the form of aliens, uh, presenting themselves as a higher intelligence when really it's just another avenue for Satan to deceive you. They're you just blew natural. someone's mind just now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never go heard. watch it. Go watch it. It's all on our channel. They're interdimensional <laughs> deceivers, not intergalactic travelers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So the next couple of clips I'm going to show you, it's actually a lady that's new age. And she kind of takes you there short, but she takes you through her journey and how she started with meditation and where it took her. Mm. And it really ties into this episode with her saying, are there aliens on the moon? Mm. So I thought it was interesting. One of the first things I wanted to do when I got away from, from home was I wanted to take a meditation retreat. I wanted to go on this meditation retreat. So it was a 10 day silent meditation retreat called the Vipassana. Really cool, out in the middle of the woods, wanted to center myself. And on the second night of meditation, I ended up getting abducted by these really tall, light looking beings. And that just seems normal. I mean, she seems excited to share that when she meditated, she got abducted by alien. What's the purpose of these retreats? Is the silent retreats is the retreats where you have on like these blindfolds the whole time for an extended period of time? Yeah. And then when you lift them off finally, like it's just a C4 experience of now you're hmm. getting light back. Like, I haven't heard of that, but I've heard of like the isolation chambers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. where you have uh, there's no senses, so you're yeah. in the water and you don't feel anything. It's Ooh, body wow. temperature, so you don't even feel it's the extreme. water. Yeah. yeah, you don't. So you don't feel anything. There's so no like, why? <laughs> because you're you can't see anything. You're in a complete black capsule. You don't feel anything because you're floating in the salty water. That's body temperature, so you don't even feel the water. You don't feel like you're sitting on anything. You're floating in space. And it causes hallucinogenic mm, reactions yeah. and okay. stuff because, like, there's nothing to distract your senses, touch, feel, anything. Um, and then everything you think is just kind of, like, visualized in front of you. And people literally come out of there like their whole lives are changed. That's crazy. Yeah, I would think for a lot of people going into the new age, it's challenging to learn how to shut off the distractions, how to close mm. your mind and truly open yourself up to the point where the deception can happen. So a lot of people that, you know, they spend honestly like an admirable amount of their time 
just in silence to Mm -hmm. reach something. You know, it's almost like a call to Christians, like how much time do we spend in God's word? How much time do we spend in prayer? Like they're, they're topping us here to get to the aliens. Like, come on, we got to step up our game. But you know, it's just, I think a step for them to then reach whatever it is they're trying to contact or channel or. Okay. These practices are a slippery slope. You know, a lot of times people say, you know, I just like, we hear all these new age stories and they're like, yeah, I started out with yoga. I had a bad back and I was doing it for stretching. I just did it for exercise. And so I'm going to these yoga classes and I, and the, either the yoga instructor or somebody I go to the class with starts saying, Hey, have you ever tried meditation? It's really good for stress and all this. Oh, well, I'm stressed out. So now I'm doing meditation. And next thing you know, I'm communicating with beings, ascended right. masters. And a right. lot of times there's aliens involved in these ascended masters. And then next thing you know, you're like Demi Lovato, you're going out to a, a field and meditating and you're seeing an apparition of a glowing disc. Yeah. And, I actually and just saw these today on YouTube, um, just searching through stuff. She has a video where it says there were three aliens in her room. I had a, a night where I was dreaming and I say dreaming very loosely because I don't really know what happened, but I all of a sudden was in my room and and there was like three beings. And then and they <laughs> they no. were like, do you want to see your planet? I like whooshed out of my room and was like hovering over the planet and then all of a sudden they're like you want to see our planet? Then I whooshed to this like pink and purple planet that I've never seen, but and then what? and so that with the hypnotherapy I was like trying to figure out what exactly that was. Was it like I don't want to use the word abduction because that implies that it wasn't with consent. I was totally for it. Yeah, mm. She, Crazy. in recent years, became a professing Christian who was baptized in the Jordan River. And then less than two years later, she's channeling aliens mm. and telling other people they should do it too. So. It's sad. Yeah. It shows how slow. important choices are. Yeah. How one thing can lead to the next can lead to possession. Yeah. You know? That's right. Yes. But it's true in the opposite direction as well. Like mm. good having good choices creates good habits. It also puts you in, in the position to be hearing the voice of God and um, you know, accept the gift of salvation. It's it's all really boils down to choice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, Bluey's teaching you to meditate and then they're kind of throwing that seed of aliens or real, even the dad thinks they're probably real. And yeah. now we see a real life woman practicing meditation and gets abducted. So there is a connection here. Yeah. And then just, okay, wait till you hear what she says about the moon. Ooh, I wonder where this meeting is going to take place. And so we start traveling, floating around. All of a sudden, we're getting off this planet. All of a sudden, we're floating out of the atmosphere. I'm like, oh, okay, didn't expect this. All of a sudden, we're going to the moon. And I'm getting excited. This is great. We're going to have a meeting with the Galactic Federation on the moon. There must be some sort of base there. I didn't know at this point. Turns out we went to the moon. But instead of going on the moon for this meeting, we actually went inside the moon. I don't know if any of you knew that the moon was hollow and it's actually just a satellite device. Yeah, I got one of you, cool. Um, I didn't know it this time that the moon was hollow. So we have to travel inside the center of the moon. Wow. Mm. So sh- <laughs> aliens on the moon. But I, I, I'm going to make a point here. I don't believe that she actually went to the moon. No. no, yeah. no. I believe that, that obviously... Uh, demonic manifestations like they can make you feel something show you something um you know growing up i i had some weird things sometimes when i would Mm -hmm. see like weird stuff like i would wake up and i would see like blue balls and floating around and whatnot and and um so like you know these things happen, but it doesn't yeah. mean that there was actually a blue ball in my room. It right, means that right. there were some weird demonic manifestations. Yeah. So you bring up an interesting point. Um, Satan has power, right? But not the same power or authority that God has. For instance, Satan cannot create mm-hmm. and those types of things. But, okay, here's an example of, of, of God interacting with humanity. Philip was what transported, teleported from mm-hmm. where he was to visit the Enoch. Uh, the eunuch, the eunuch, <laughs> eunuch. <laughs> to visit the eunuch, or you have the case where Jesus, when the crowd turned against, turned against him, I was actually going to push him off the cliff. He disappeared and showed up somewhere else. So, mm. you know, and we believe these things, like these things actually happen. So, is it possible now for the counterfeit, for the devil, to to teleport people in this way, even if it's not their physical body, it's their consciousness, mm-hmm. and it's a real thing? What Absolutely. do you think? Yeah, yeah. When like. Lucifer is an angel. Like we, we, we think like Satan is like a, 
a counterpart to God. Like there's God and there's the devil. No, there's God. And then mm-hmm. there's angels and Satan's one of those right. angels. Mm-hmm. But even the angels can give visions. And Lucifer is an angel. Satan is an angel. He still has power. He's still a very powerful foe that we are. We we're matchless to him right? without God's word. Yeah. And if you are messing around tarot cards, meditation, yoga, all these things, you're playing on his territory. You're giving him an invitation into your life. And so now when you're seeking, I want to have an astral out of body experience. Like I've heard about Satan's like, all right, I'll give you one. Mm -hmm. And now when you're closing your eyes or even in your sleep, I talk about, um, lucid dreaming and things Mm -hmm. like that. Satan has now give, has been given permission to give you these visions and he can make you fly out and see things that are really there. Yeah. Because if you're seeking after it, you're asking for it. So, you know, you're giving permission. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's keep going. I think next we have another oh this is something i found i thought it was hilarious these are delicious Uh, Uh, have you had them before i was actually at the grocery store and i was like hey these look good you know they look healthy and i just flip it over Uh to check out the nutritional facts (laughs) just check this out what Uh, i know i remember that (laughs) right in the supermarket it must be the different brand (laughs) (laughs) so yeah i was just talking you know a lady she's meditating and she's having these cravings and this wonderful nutritious in her yoga studio you know fresh fruit and water and then boom missing snack displayed blame on aliens and saying that they came to to eat all of her chips apparently wow it's interesting they keep making the same connection yeah like comical but Mm. still like same bag they're meditation aliens yeah like if there weren't all these other evidences of these things being linked it'd be like oh that's just weird but yeah. Again and again. So yeah. in TV, media, yeah. in the grocery, grocery store. store yeah. And again, the reason why we're talking about aliens as a bad thing is because when you do the research, we understand aliens are uh, demons uh, manifesting themselves as aliens. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. There's a really great book by Joe Jordan. I want to say it's Piercing the Cosmic Veil. I'm almost finished with it, but he is um, a MUFON director and he has collaborated with a bunch of MUFON from around the world. It's like the mutual UFO network, I believe, Uh, pulling out my nerd knowledge. Um, (laughs) But he has over 600 documented cases now of people who have had horrible, terrifying UFO encounters and just calling on the name of Jesus has cast them away. So like, what other proof do you need? If the name of Jesus, you know, and, scares and it away when he, first, he wasn't a christian when he started this True. journey either he was like i believe in aliens and he's going down the road of new age mm-hmm. and i can't remember his testimony but somehow he became a christian he started looking through all these tapes of uh, abductees telling their stories and he was like asking god god what what is it? i need to know what this is because i don't understand if you created these beings or what and god told him you've already seen the answer what go through the tapes again because they went through all the tapes And him and his friend were going through the tapes. And next thing I know, they're seeing a testimony that neither one of them remembered watching, but they Mm -hmm. watched all of them. And it's somebody saying, yeah, I was pulled out of my bed into a spaceship. And I I just began to pray and sing hymns and pray in the name of Jesus. And I was instantly thrown back into my bed. And they're like, whoa, wait a minute. Because we've been to all these conventions and people say there's no way to escape this thing. You just have to go through it. So he started going to continuing to go to all these conventions and questioning that question have you ever heard of this where people are coming out of this experience by praying in the name of Jesus? And they were like, yeah, yeah. we just really didn't know what to think of it. <laughs> yeah. And actually in the Come book, on. he says that all the researchers have admitted like, yeah, absolutely. We have proof of this, but yep. we can't really come forward with that because it would ruin our credibility Exactly. in the scientific world. Like they don't want to cross the spiritual barrier somehow. Oh. I've had an experience like that that I've shared on the show. It wasn't out of body, though. Um, Mm -hmm. It was like I was walking down the hallway towards my room, and then all of a sudden the the house started spinning, and I actually collapsed on the floor, and I didn't know what was happening. I was totally fine a moment before. Mm -hmm. And I said the name of Jesus three times, and just like that, everything went away, and I was able to get up and and hadn't had that problem ever again. And so that, just having that experience, I was like, whoa, just... Um, experiencing for myself the power of the name of Jesus, yes. being able mm-hmm. to say it and things happen and everything stops. So same, same here. Whenever that happened to me when I was a teenager, just pray in the name of Jesus and it would go away. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, someone could say, oh, maybe I had a medical episode or whatever. But it's like interesting. You say the name of Jesus and mm-hmm. in that instant that you say it, everything goes away. I don't think that's how right. science works. But right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so anyway, that to share that, it's like, all right, 
the next step is out of body. The next step is having some kind of spiritual thing. It's like this, it happens to people. Yeah. Like if you hadn't called the name of Jesus, what would have happened exactly? Right. Like where would that have progressed to Mm -hmm. eventually you could. Yeah. When you, when you, the more you surrender to God, Satan attacks you more in hopes that you don't understand spiritual warfare. Like, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to attack them. And maybe they don't know to call on Jesus. And, and, and there might be people that don't, and they're Mm -hmm. having these attacks, sleep paralysis and all this stuff. And they, they can't overcome because they don't know how to fight the the spiritual war because we, we are, we're, we're defenseless against Satan unless yeah. we have his word. That's how Jesus that himself mm-hmm. fought the temptations of the devil. He didn't try in his own physical strength or try to outwit him or anything. It's just like, it is written. It is written. It is written every time speaking the word because yep. it is the sword. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's right. That's good. Okay, we're going to keep moving. I'm, I think I move on to a different show at this point. Okay, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Toy Story. Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. husband, it's like his favorite. So we rented this one from the library. It's the Toy Story that time forgot. Okay. So we have dinosaurs and like battle bots and they come together and the, the toys that you're familiar with, Woody and all them come and it's just a different world that they see, but it's interesting what they say. Okay. So I just wanted to show you a couple of clips from this. <laughs> Now we know where they keep the fossils. <clears throat> Strangers from the unforgiving outlands. We have traveled far from the distant Bonnie tribe. <laughs> <laughs> Leave your offerings and be gone. <clears throat> are dinosaurs not welcome in our great city, wise cleric? <sighs> fine, fine, have them made presentable. I find their lack of armor. Disturbing. So, yeah, what I thought was interesting here is the the little creepy guy that comes out with the moon and the stars. He calls him the cleric. Mm. And so, you know, it, it's the religious leader, the guy that they're following for, you know, obviously wisdom and all of this thing. So I just included him to show it's kind of like new agey. Yeah. Just that, yeah. that hint of it. And also, interesting enough, he's all concerned about their armor. <laughs> Which I went just talking about like the armor of God. Yeah, I'm right. like, oh, that's interesting that they're all trying to, you know, he's like, they don't have armor. Hmm. Well, he has a big staff with uh, stars and moons mm-hmm. and all these like kind of new yeah. agey things on it too. Yeah. As a religious leader, he's definitely not looked upon as like, oh, you're cool. Like we want to hang out with you. He was immediately like, oh, so this is where the fossils are kept. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So like, again, religion is portrayed as, Meh, you know, boring. Yeah. That's true. Okay, this next clip is where it gets interesting. You have to listen carefully. I can really get used to this. Give us some muscle. You want to close your aren't you, like? Prehistoric buildings, dinosaur cars, whatever that thing's meant to be. What is it? The Triassic Tower of the Dream Elders, through which distant beings convey cosmic wisdom from another dimension. Ah. Bonnie just yells across the room in a funny voice. I've noticed that it seems like, you know, Satan is so subtle, so deceptive that he really tells you the truth. Like now they're even in the news, they're not even calling these things aliens. Like when they go to these big hearings, they're like, are they alien? They're like, well, I don't like to call them alien because that puts them in a box or they're non-human intelligences. I'm like, Okay, so literally we're being told on the news that we're we're communicating with non-human intelligences. Like, that's literally demonic. And right here he's saying that we get wisdom from these intelligent cosmic beings or whatever. Yeah. I, I mean, it does sound alien, but he said interdimensional too. You know what's off-putting? Where did God, what thing did God use to meet with the Israelites? The Ark of the Covenant? The no, no, before all of that. And Moses had to climb it to oh, the mountain. The mountain. Uh, he said oh, that it's a mountain at the top of the mountain. Beings, terrestrial beings, that's how they uh, talk to the people. It's wow. on this mountain and on this. So it's like, mm, for me, as a Christian, God. reading the stories of the Bible and then seeing this, it's such a counterfeit. Yeah. yeah. And how do we know what's truth and what's error? You got to test the spirits. You got to know whether they are speaking of God or of some other spirit. And just the themes and what they're talking about and the attitudes, you know what spirit is there. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. I'm just curious, are these good guys, bad guys? Or who are they? Um, in the end, they all end up turning good. Like they, they have to teach them that it's not about like battling and they're battle bots, I guess. So yeah. they like defeat, like rip toys apart. 
So they're good guys that get their knowledge from this creepy interdimensional yeah. cosmic being. It's only like a 30 minute video. I don't know if there's more like in a series or anything. This mm. is just what we found at the library. So I don't, if there's background to it, I'm not sure, but no. it doesn't, I don't think it really displays them as good or bad. It's like they're, you know, they start off as battle bots and by the end of it, Woody and, and Buzz in their fashion teach them that you know, you're a toy and mm. you're just acting, but you, you should have find your fulfillment in playing with children. Okay. Oh, instead of this? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's We're interesting. Putting the seed but up. at the end, there's like a kind of a, a dance episode, like an, a dance scene where they're all like happy. And even the, the weird cleric is like doing a little jig, mm. but the, like it's all still there. So they might have changed their mentality, but they still have their, yeah, the you know, their false of system. Light and darkness, it seems mm, like. Yeah. Okay, we're just going to move on to our next one. Has anyone heard of Paw Patrol? No, Paw Patrol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To my demise. <gasps> Look at your paws. Whoa. It's some kind of fireball. Well, that makes sense. You're a fire pup. I wonder what your power is. Huh? Chase? Marshall, up here! Hey, how'd you get over there so fast? Get over where? Ah! Great. Now the clumsy pup shoots fireballs out of his paws. Cool. I'm a wrecking ball. Oh, I can't believe I'm going to be on the cover of Mayor Magazine with our amazing meteor! Hmm. If I could just get a piece of that meteor, I'd get my super building powers back. And I'd make my own town to be mayor of. Like, that's ever gonna happen. Oh, and maybe one more photo of me like this. Oops! It's not like a meteor piece is just gonna fall right in front of me. Like that meteor piece just did. <gasps> a meteor piece! As a parent, um, how do you navigate pure, genuine imagination? How do you distinguish that or help a child with that versus actually believing it to be true? Because I can picture a kid, he, he gets a rock and he's like, I'm king now. And he's running around with his siblings and like the rock gave him that authority. And that's just like play. It's make believe. Mm -hmm. It's fine. It's innocent. He may not even have seen the show and he comes up with that idea versus actually believing like this rock gives me some sort of power and he keeps in his pocket wherever he sure. goes or what have you. How would you navigate that as parents? Honestly, I, I would say authentic relationship with your children, just mm. like God wants authentic relationship with us. When you have a good relationship with your children, you're able to have those conversations. It's not like telling them one time, hey, you're not going to get superpowers from a stick or a rock. They'll be like, okay, well, I'm still going to play with it. I'm yeah. still going to pretend. But it's that ongoing conversation. So for instance, for this episode, um, these shows on Paw Patrol, my son was really into Paw Patrol and those were the, the ones I would let him watch from the library. It actually helped me potty train him, which I was super thankful for. Gosh. He would only get to watch a show if he, you know, okay. did a, a thing for the toilet. So um, he would watch it. And, and when we got, got this show, he instantly was like, whoa, well, what's going on? What's this? He already has this little bit of discernment coming. Wow. Awesome. And I'm like, what do you mean? I was, I'm not even paying attention. Cause I'm like, it's just Paw Patrol. And I look over and I'm like, whoa, they're oh, okay. He's like, yeah, mom, they're like superheroes and they get it all from the rock. I'm like, hmm, wow. do you ever see that in the Bible? And he's like, no. Hmm. I'm like, yeah, that's interesting. And then after we kept watching, I was like, I think maybe we should not watch this. He's like, yeah, it kind of sounds like they're not going to God. Oh, man, wow. that's like, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so we just turned it off. And of course, he still likes the other Paw Patrol. But mm -hmm. he's told me, he's like, I can't watch that, mom. I'm like, oh, good. You know, he's five. But yeah. it doesn't happen, you know, overnight. You have to have yeah. ongoing conversations. Yep. And then they develop that discernment for themselves, which... When did you start having those conversations? Like at two, super three? Super early. Super early. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was really protective of my children. So we wouldn't read any, you know, a Disney or stories about witches or, mm -hmm. you know, even fairy tales. Because a lot of that has that stuff thrown in. You don't mm -hmm. catch it. So we would just read the Bible a lot. Kids stories, but different versions of... Bible stories. Vegetarian. That's excellent. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of books well, too. The old Veggie Tales. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day. That was good stuff. <laughs> yeah, when they were Bible based. Yeah. Um, yeah, so 
as early on as you can. You know, you, you never understand how much their brain can comprehend mm -hmm. as a baby, but a lot more, I think, than we know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even Absolutely. if they don't understand the words, it's like what you ingrained them early Absolutely. on sticks the hardest. And the Bible talks about, you know, once you've given yourself into deception, like there's there comes a point where God just gives you over to it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, any any bit of deception as parents, we have to be really careful and what we let our kids watch and what deception we're letting into their hearts and minds. Because like you said, from a young age, it really does affect their belief system and what yeah. they think is true. I know I'm not easy to lift. Just put more muscle into it. Harold, the kitties can't concentrate with all this racket. I'm not making a racket, Uncle Mayor. I'm remaking my super duper major power robot. <laughs> Watch this. Ooh, it's just as awesome as I remembered. Actually, awesomer, I've added a super amazing teleporter! A tele-water? A teleporter. It can make stuff disappear and reappear someplace else. Watch! Ah, where'd my mayor hat go? <laughs> right there. <laughs> Gives me a great naughty idea. Let's go on a hat snatching spree. <laughs> yeah, so this is just to show again, you know, how they're using these powers. But uh, Candy brought up earlier how there's always a counterfeit for what God does. So here, what they're doing with this rock is they're now getting the power of creation. Mm -hmm. So he made this whole robot, and then putting the stone inside of it gave it life. Wow. So, wow. you know, yeah. I, again, just the same kind of things going on and on. But I wanted yeah. to show the different things that they were doing with the rock. So this next uh, bit of cartoon that I wanted to show comes as a little bit of a shock because the other ones were all secular, whereas this one is Christian based and mm. I think made really well. My kids also love this show. But again, I started seeing red flags. Oh. So let's just let's check it out and it. see. Superbug. Have you heard of Superbug? What? I I've never watched Superbug. it, but I've heard people talk oh. about it. This was a play on TBN, right? TBN? Yeah, or CBN. C yeah Christian yeah. Broadcasting Network. Mm -hmm. Okay, one, they put it on. So yeah, so this is really interesting. What I want you to just keep an eye out for is uh, what, like, where do they get the Bible? Just, just keep an eye. I mean, it took me almost two years to save enough money for a telescope, Joy. How can anyone expect me to take care of the rest of the food drive money? Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Wow. Okay, okay, okay. So aliens are demons and demon manifestations. So technically the the demons came and gave him the word of God and then said, I'm going to take you to my realm yeah. to teach you about God. What? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Crazy though. Like it seems completely unrelated, but this is the, what's being like pushed right now in media is mm -hmm. like ufologists and all these Scientologists are saying the the new information that we're getting from these alien <laughs> channelers and all this, this new tech and you know, the, the, what the message that they're getting is that the Bible is going to be replaced. Like we have such mm. new information about the Bible. It's like a rereading of the Bible because of what we've now found through science and channeling aliens. Well, what I've noticed is Satan can't say the Bible's not true. He can't say the Bible's not true. There's too much proof it is. So he takes all those stories and twists them like, oh yeah, Moses did follow a beam of light out of a wilderness. That was a UFO he was yeah. following. And the, and the pillar of fire, or the pillar of smoke, well, that was the exhaust from a UFO. <laughs> Aliens helped them out of the wilderness. When Ezekiel saw a wheel within a wheel with eyes all around the edge, that was a UFO. You know, these are primitive people describing things that they didn't understand and they just attribute it to a God, but it was really visitors from other worlds. That's the problem when you start stepping away from the scriptures and mm -hmm. don't interpret scripture with other scriptures, mean the, the Bible with the Bible. But when you start adding your own interpretation, you'll never come to the truth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you know and believe that the Bible is a source of truth and we can see that because because there's been times in uh, the Bible that, that you can uh, see how it came true in history, right? There's yeah. an actual connection between the Bible and the physical world that we live yeah, in. Prophecies. Mm -hmm. prophecies being fulfilled. We know the Bible is the word of God. We know that it is truth. 
if you step away from the source of truth to find truth, you'll never find yeah. truth. Right. Just the deception. That's right. And there's plenty of those. It's close. Everywhere. The crazy thing with this is we had watched this for many seasons. This is actually the clips I'll show is season five of Superbook. And my son one day was like, why, why are they getting the Bible from a spaceship? Mm. And it never even clicked to me. I was like, that does look like a spaceship. Like, I just thought it was some new tech, you know, but. Yeah, because yeah. the old one, there used this used to, it started out as like an anime. Mm -hmm. And I like the art. I love the anime art and it's Christian. But it used to just be the Bible itself. Or just like, pop fly open. Out, yeah. of the, uh, right. out of the drawer and open up and a beam right. of light. And they'd go into the Bible. That sounds way more, you know, mm. closer to the truth than yeah. this. Wait, put on your helmet. Exactly what aliens do? Yeah. Whoa, no way. Mm. Yeah, Super so. book, a show about the Bible is far from biblical. Mm. This yeah. is unfortunate. So kids, when you see a blue ball like Denise did, go after it. Mm. See what it mm -hmm. is. Find out. Right. That was the biggest thing that alerted my red flags was, you know, whatever you're seeing in the sky, like, chase after it. Yeah. Like you have yeah. to, you have to find out what it is. That was the whole mission. And like the wow. beginning of the episode in the end was he was so focused on this light and he had to know what this light was, which is the complete opposite Whoa. of what we're instructed by God. And we'll put the Bible verse there yeah. of like, he's saying when, when people say, Oh, go here and look yeah, at right. this or Christ no. is here. Don't do not go. go. Don't will be figure it out. You have to know what it is. No, just don't even associate yourself. And they're here trying to figure this out. Yeah. There's coming a time when we have to live by the say of the Lord Absolutely. because there's going to be many signs and wonders. And it says that many will fall from the faith or depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. And that's coming from the lying signs and wonders. Yeah. But you've we already seen though, yeah. like this is seducing uh, uh, spirits and exactly. devils and seducing doctrines. Yep. All these movies and the news telling you that, Aliens are real and soon they're going to come. I mean, they're going to manifest and they're going to be on the news and they're going to be saying, hey, we, we can cure all your problems. COVID can be gone and yeah. cancer and mm -hmm. all that and build your trust. And that's the signs and miracles that are coming. Yeah. And then here they're blending it with religion again. Yeah. So it's not just science saying this is the truth. No, it's religion yeah. saying it's okay. The Vatican is 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 uh, you know, embracing way. this idea of aliens as mm -hmm. well. So, Yeah. It's alarming. So this next one I wanted to show is actually part of the Bible story of Philip. It's just interesting how they depicted it happening. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wait, so that's Philip arising and that with with the Ethiopian? Yeah, so that takes place after he baptizes the Ethiopian. But what does it say in the Bible? 
It says he just vanished. He, just, right? he disappears. Yeah, it's he not even like the Bible the isn't sky. specific. It it literally says what happened. <laughs> yeah, vanished, and they're like watching. Whoa, he's going up in a beam of light. Like like Jesus did. Yeah, yeah. you know, and Very and God isn't a esque with the beam and everything. The aliens have come to get Philip. Woo! He's yeah. not theatrical in this way, and he's purposeful about not being theatrical because mm. he doesn't want us to be so easily deceived or follow him for the wrong reasons. Yeah. So this is. Wow. Well, that's another thing with the whole ancient aliens deceptions, as they say, you know, Enoch, he was abducted by an alien. Jesus, yeah, he ascended it back there. to his mother's ship. <laughs> yeah. Philip, you know, he got transported by aliens and he was a Christian production, basically. Just embracing it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That must be the truth because it's everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it looked just, just is, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like how similar. I'm thankful there wasn't a spaceship at the top, at right, least in Superbook, yeah. but... Yeah, like it just identical to the idea of being abducted here. Wow, so that that was definitely interesting because I didn't expect those things to be in Superbook. I really like yeah, Superbook. That's a bummer. Yeah. I do too. My kids love it. But I, again, like as parents, you just it, it's about presence. You know, you have to be present. Mm-hmm. You have to pay attention to what your kids yeah. are watching and even if a show like we kind of said earlier, if a show seems good and acceptable for your kids, keep watching it because you never know what it's going to morph into as mm. the seasons go or what deceptions they're going to slip in once it's past your safety net. Right. So So what do you guys think about, uh, does this mean we should just like eliminate all TV viewing altogether because even the good stuff is bad or, or what do you think? I think you, as a, I'm, I'm not a parent right now, but I think that as a wise parent, it's, watch the episodes before you watch it with your kid and that's a time investment but you know then you at least know what you're showing them and knowing how uh media and tv impacted me as a kid and how you could just watch one uh movie of harry potter like i did and all of a sudden you know about it you know there's magic (laughs) it's not going to leave your brain right and so just watching it beforehand, taking the time to invest in your child. And, and you know, like if the, if the show is continually like, oh, there's like five episodes and four of them are bad and one of them is good. I don't know. Yeah. I wouldn't waste my time on that. I'd be like, find yeah. something else that's more, I don't know. Or at kosher. the very <laughs> least, watch it together. So when it comes up, you can, you can, say, you can oh, talk oh, about oh, it. Look yeah. at that. No, yeah. that's not what the Bible said. Let's look what the Bible said. He vanished. It's a good opportunity to actually do some Bible study comparison. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, like, like Wendy was saying, she's been teaching her kids this from the beginning, and now they're using their discernment at five years old. That's right. You know, uh, I know that in the office, our kids have this discernment too. And when my daughter sees something, she picks up on the follow your heart, mm. let's break the rules, and she'll just yeah. kind of look at me like, there it is. Like, you're right. It's in everything. Um, it's also coming it, to the terms with there's not going to be an, an alternative for everything. Yeah. That's right. Right. So yeah. it. It's it's all right to teach your children that it's okay to do without, yeah. <laughs> or to find yeah, yeah. find fulfillment outside of media. When you think of all these um, holidays like Halloween, and we're trying to replace it with something right. else, just don't, just don't do, do anything, yeah. you know, on that day, or yeah. treat it like any other day. And I think that will that would help not just guard from from the messages that are in these these films but it'll help them develop as as people as yeah. balanced people of like i'm okay like i'm not watching anything and that's okay yeah, yeah. there's yeah. definitely a balance when you're a parent because research shows that show like watching tv and watching media isn't good for development of their brain yeah, yeah. that's so right. you have to be very careful with how much you let them see regardless of what the show is but then you know eventually they're going to grow up they're going to be yeah. exposed to media so y- you also don't want them to be you know born as an adult into this world of bombardment of media with no discernment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I feel like as your children grow, you have to walk with them and teach them how to use discernment, you know, as they're mature enough to accept it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. and you're right about it being a time investment because there are good things out there. Like mm-hmm. little like kids, check That's that right. out. Yeah. <laughs> little like kids. Our newest and latest YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah. We need your support for that because we believe in, training up a child in the way they should go and giving them something that they can watch because a mm-hmm. lot of people are not throwing their TVs out just because they know this information. They're, mm-hmm. They want to see what can we watch. And yeah. we can't recommend anything, so we're going to make it. <laughs> That's right. That's how we do it, so. And then another element, of course, is prayer, inviting yeah. God into your home and asking him to reveal to you the good things that are out there. I remember um, scrolling through uh, Roku one time and I saw this free movie. It's called Acts of the Apostles. And in the bottom right-hand corner, 
I thought it was time stamps, but it was actually verses. They were going wow. through the verses Singular. of the Bible. Yeah, yeah. And That's it was cool. the narration was literally reading the Bible. Nice. And so everything that was depicted, all the the dialogue, most of the dialogue, because they had like they depicted Luke um, being a doctor. And I was like, I was just clicking through and I found a gem nice. like that. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit is there to utilize. And if yeah. we just invite him into our homes, into our hearts, he will He will guide us. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Wendy, for showing us this yeah. because we haven't picked up on this. We're usually looking at trailers of new things that are coming out, but it's in everything, man. So you got to be truly. careful, guys. Even with the cute instant shows, If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps get it out into the algorithm so more people can see this. We want everyone to know that they need to be discerning of this stuff. And if you want to support this ministry, you can do so by going to littlelightstudios.tv. There's a button up there that says donate. That really helps us out. And if you want to get something back, check out lightwear.shop. We have some awesome Mm t-shirts where you can really wear your witness. They're great conversation starters about spiritual things. You know, somebody might just be looking at your shirt. Beauty for Ashes, what's that about? Great opportunity. We love you. We thank you guys for all you do, all your support. And we'll see you next time on LED Live. If you're looking for good, wholesome, educational content for your children, subscribe to our new channel, Little Light Kids. Hey, subscribe to Little Light Studios en Español. Vas a encontrar muchos videos de Little Light Studios que están traducidos en Español. Y también contenido exclusivamente para nuestra audiencia latina. If you want to learn Spanish, a great way will be watching our videos for practice.